Hi everyone and welcome to Turk TV. There's been a lot of discussion about housing affordability, so we're going to look into that, particularly with the election, everybody's talking about it. We're also going to look at Unley for the SA's finest home and a magnificent home it is. For those of you that are in rural areas or even in the Belair or the Hills areas, we look at how to prepare for the bushfire season. It is just around the corner. Now, for those of you that have any questions or queries during the show, remember we're live and interactive, so get on the phones and get those emails going and we'll answer them at the end of the show. Enjoy. And a hung parliament, you've got to be kidding me. After putting up with the election for four weeks and everyone just kind of goes, I don't know, go, they go a bit odd, um, like a full moon, and then a hung parliament, good one. Anyway, hopefully they'll get that sorted out soon. Irrespective, hopefully those that are listening are sick of doing nothing and just get out there and get amongst it because spring is right around the corner. Now, today's show, we talk about the monthly update and how rental's going. Uh, interesting story. Uh, but first of all, the inside story on housing affordability that's been in the paper. Let's go and have a look at that. The great Australian dream of home ownership is turning into a nightmare as increasing property prices threaten to keep many first home buyers out of the market. The latest statistics released by the Housing Industry Association show Adelaide's housing affordability has dramatically decreased over the past year. During the 2010 June quarter, the affordability figure dropped 8.7%, which is down 25.5% from the same time last year. Also in this time, loan repayments have risen by almost $700 to just over $2,500 a month. While South Australia remains the most affordable mainland state in the country, this is little consolidation for first home buyers dealing with rising property prices. My eldest got married and had to buy a house and um, the amount of money they had to borrow, and even, even though they're on a, on a good wage or that, they're struggling to pay it off. Without help from mums and dads and, uh, and friends or going in with joint as a joint investment, I mean, you think of a kid starting on you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year to try and buy a three, four hundred thousand dollar house just to have anything, which is half decent. I reckon, yeah, it's getting very tough. However, others believe the real problem is the selection of properties currently on the market. There's a real shortage on the market at the moment, and um, of properties within that price range for first home buyers. Every time something comes up, it's gone within a week or two. It's feared housing affordability could continue to plummet in coming months if the federal government idly stands by while first home buyers struggle with a lack of new land releases and strict bank lending criteria. So housing affordability is a really big issue. Now we want to drill down a bit on that sort of news. It was a big article in the paper, quite a bit of discussion about housing affordability and leading up to the election of course uh, it was trying to be made an election issue. So joining us today is someone that most of you would have seen in the papers and seen in the media is Robert Harding and he's the Regional Director of the Housing Industry Association Limited or the HIA. Welcome Robert. Good afternoon Anthony, thank you for inviting me. Now there's been a lot of discussion, you've been right in the middle of it, right up to your uh, elbows in it. Tell me about housing affordability as you see it. Well housing affordability has been decreasing in Australia for over a large number of years, particularly in the last 10 years we've seen a real drop in housing affordability uh, and particularly amongst first home buyers and I guess from a social perspective uh, that's not something that we've been particularly excited about. Um, one of the features of the Australian society has been the ability of people to own their own home to establish equity in that manner uh, and so it is worrying signs. And housing affordability is not just about purchasing, it's also about rental as well. Uh, now Robert, you've been involved in real estate for years. I remember back in the Real Estate Institute days, you were heavily involved there as well. So you've got the new homes and the established homes. Um, how's the relationship between uh, building and how does that flow in or does it impact at all on the established market? Well, it really has two effects, Anthony. The first is that if we're not building enough new homes, that's going to put pressure on established home prices simply by the laws of demand and supply. And certainly that's what's been happening in the last 10 years is that we've been building nowhere near enough new homes to meet the supply demand. So as I say, that puts demands and raises the prices of existing homes. Uh, but it also has, uh, it also has the effect that um, if new home prices rise because of the fact that we're, uh, there's a demand for them, that 
flows down the chain and it raises existing homes simply by the fact that people are looking at the greater uh, purchasing, purchasing price that they're going to have to pay. Now, um, leading up to the election, um, which is now gone, but we're still waiting to find out the outcome, we, as industries, the Housing Industry Association uh, and the Real Estate Institute, we couldn't seem to get housing on the agenda. Why, why is that? Well, certainly in the last election where um, Rudd was elected, uh, housing was a really big feature of the election campaign of both parties and uh, the Labor Party made a real effort to address housing affordability. For some reason, housing affordability seems to have slipped off the radar for the major parties in this election, which is a real, uh, a real disappointment. And it's a particularly a disappointment, I think, to the social welfare groups who see um, social housing and Indigenous housing as being a real issue. And neither of the parties have seemed to come to grips with that issue at the, in this current election. Now, there was a, um, a call by the Real Estate Institute, and I think with the HIA, um, for a return of the stimulus package back for first home buyers. Do you agree or disagree with the stimulus package? Well, I guess that some of the things I might say, Anthony, you may not uh, particularly <laughs> agree with, um, but we think that the first home buyers grant certainly saved our industry through the uh, financial crisis. Without that, uh, there would have been much greater unemployment in our industry and that would have affected the general economy. Uh, our view is that if you are going to provide financial incentives for first home buyers, which we support, then it really should be for the construction of new homes because that's adding to the supply rather than for existing homes. And again, um, when uh, the first homeowners grant was brought in, it was to offset the GST cost. And the GST cost for new homes is a substantially higher amount than what it is for established homes. Right, so, okay. So do, do you think uh, there's been a lot of discussion that by putting the stimulus boost, those $21,000, it's actually all it's done is put more money onto the price of established and new homes. Is that true? No, I don't, certainly don't believe that's true about, stab, about uh, new homes. That certainly we didn't see that type of increase uh, in the price of new homes. And in fact, um, the, real, the real facts and figures are that new home prices haven't increased that much over the, the, the 10 years. Uh, the cost of producing the new home hasn't increased that much. It's the cost of land that's really increased over the last 10 years. Right, so let's go to land. That's got to be linked to government in South Australia because they hold the, the land banks. Yes. Are they ripping us off or what's happening? I think that certainly in South Australia, and you've got to take each of the states and territories uh, separately, because in uh, a lot of other states, the government doesn't control as much land as they do here. In South Australia, the LMC controls 90% of the land over, uh, over 50 hectares. So that's been a significant issue so far as South Australia is concerned. All right, we're starting to get some meaty things there. We're going to return to this in a minute, Robert. So um, just for the moment, let's go and... Uh, and see what's happening with property and let's go behind the blinds.